Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, Season 4, Episode 12, King of Wishful Thinking. We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. First couple we got is Rose and Ed. Rose is still going off on Ed. I said, come on, Rose. <laughs> she didn't let him come up for breath. She she was saying, look, you treat me horribly. Like, you bet you're a liar. You've been lying ever since I've been talking to you. And I'm tired of it. Um, I don't even think you like my son or my family. You know, your behavior is very unacceptable. And <laughs> he tries to plead his case like, you know, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I understand where you're coming from and whatnot. And he, the whole time he's talking, she's looking at him like, Are you done? Are you done? Okay. And then she, she's like, Look, your behavior is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. She went... <laughs> She went school teacher on him. Your behavior is unacceptable, okay? And first of all, we're, we're, we're breaking up. We're done. We're done, okay? Second of all, I want you to change your behavior. I want you to learn and grow from this because I don't want you to do the next girl like you did me, okay? I said, come on, Rose. <laughs> Rose took him to school, okay? So Ed got up and he walked away. He says, look, I'm, okay, if I'm a bad guy, that's fine. I'm a bad guy. And he walks away. Um, he says he can't take, you know, he couldn't take all that. <laughs> Rose got up, you know, she went to the hotel room. She packed her stuff. The producers tried to talk to her. They're like, you know, what's going on? Like, what are you thinking? She's like, I'm sad, you know, but I'm sad that, you know, Ed doesn't own up to his behavior. And, you know, I'm sad. I miss my son. I came over here, you know, and I could have stayed with my son, but I chose to come here and be with Ed. You know, I'm going to go back and see my son. And it is what it is. I said, you better go on. You better move on and grow, Rose. I love it, okay? So then we cut to Ed. And Ed was saying, you know, he couldn't he couldn't take what she was saying. It was too much. And, you know, he thinks that she just needs some time to cool off. And maybe their relationship will still be there. And I'm like, I don't know, Ed. You, you pushed that girl too far, okay? You pushed her way too far and she was done with you. Then we get to David. <laughs> so last episode we saw that David hired a private investigator to get to the bottom of this whole Lana situation but he got mad at the private investigator because he thought the private investigator was lying I don't know <laughs> he got mad at the private investigator and was like you know forget him and he hadn't been talking to Lana in a couple of weeks he updates us this episode he's like look Lana had messaged me last night she she explained what happened she said last time I had talked the, the last time we were supposed to meet. The reason why she stood me up was that she got scared. And, you know, she said she wants to make it up to me this time. So I immediately booked her another <laughs> ticket to Ukraine. That's exactly what he did. All Lana had to type into the computer was H-I. And that man was on <laughs> Priceline.com booking his flight. Okay. So he, he makes it into the Ukraine. And um, he is just so happy. He's like, Lana, I'm coming. He's looking out the air, the airplane window like, Lana, I'm coming for you, okay? I can't, I can't wait to be with you. And I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is a mess. So he makes it to the Ukraine. He's about to book his, uh, ho he's, he's uh, checking into ho his hotel. And he tells the hotel staff, hey, I'm here because I'm about to be my girlfriend who stood me up five times already. But this time is different. Can I have my key? All right, I'm gonna see y'all next. I'm gonna see y'all in the morning. All right. <laughs> so the hotel clerk was like, "Oh my gosh, that's so sad. That's so sad. I don't care. That's so sad. <laughs> so sad. I don't care, sir. Just go up, go up to your room, sir. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. So the producers, being messy, they pull the clerk to the side and they're like, "So what do you think of him being stood up five times by this lady?" And she says, you know, I, I mean, I could, I could, I could see it. Like, there's women here that do that. So, and they, that's how they make their money. So, it is what it is. <laughs> that's a girl, it is what it is at this point. So, uh, when David gets up to the, his hotel room, he checks his computer. Lo and behold, Lana sent him a message. He says that Lana, Lana told him that he can't, she can't meet with him soon or that day or the next day because... Her nephew has a hockey game. So she gotta go to the hockey game. So she can't she can't meet him until Monday, which is like three days away. 
So David is upset. He's like, look, I cannot believe Lana's priorities. They're just all messed up. I'm her man. I should be her top priority. I've flown thousands of miles to be here. Um, I want to put my, I'm, if she, if I don't see her on Monday, I'm going to put my foot down. I said, stop. Stop it. You lie. You're not going to put your foot down. Okay. He says he's going to put his foot down if he don't see her on Monday. So Monday comes and she, I guess they agreed to meet under a statue. He's at, at 11 o'clock. So it's like 1050 something. We see him waiting, waiting, waiting. And I'm like, Lana ain't showing up. She ain't showing up. So it's 11 o'clock. It's 11.05. And he's like, look, there's like another statue, like a couple of um like another block away and he's like maybe she thinks i'm under there i don't know i'm not sure and i'm like that girl ain't coming and then he he's looking and he's he says look i think that's lana and i'm like that ain't lana stop it and he's like oh my gosh that's lana and i'm like that's lana is that lana okay and then we see lana and they, the, the actual person lana she's real okay so she meets him and gives him a hug and that's all we see for this episode so next episode we're gonna see and hear from Lana, okay? Aria and Jeffrey. We saw last episode that Jeffrey had proposed to her. They cut the they cut the episode off before she responded. So this episode picks up and we see what she says, okay? So Jeffrey tells her, look, I think we good together, okay? Like, so what's up? You wanna get married? She says, I think we're moving too fast, okay? Like, I just, I just got to know you. Like, I just found out you were slanging, okay? I just found out that she was lying about stuff. Like, my mama and my brother, you know, they don't really like you. I need to think about some things, you know? Like, I don't know. She, she basically said no, okay? <laughs> so, Jeffrey got into his feelings. And he feels, you know, hurt. He feels like he wasted his time and whatnot. But Varia says, look, this is this is moving too quickly for me, okay? And I'm like, yes, I understand. This is, this is moving way too quickly, like... Y'all barely know each other, okay? Jeffrey feels like he waited long enough for love. Um, two weeks was good for him, okay? <laughs> That's good enough for him. He says, look, I don't want to wait anymore for love. Varya tells him if we're meant to be together, then look, the time doesn't matter, boo. Jeffrey, he ain't having it, okay? <laughs> He's hurt. So the next scene, we see that they're on the way back to Moscow so that he can fly out from Moscow to the U.S., and they're in the car, and Jeffrey's in the seat just pouting like, I'm wasting my time, just, oof. He says he feels defeated, and he starts talking to Varya. He tells her, look, like, I don't know where your head is at, but, like, this is, this could be your last chance, boo. Like, so do you want to, do you want to get together, or do you not want to get together? Because as soon as I get on that, that airplane, it's over. Varya's looking at him, and she's asking, like, what do you want from me, like, what do you want from me? Like, what do you want me to say? Okay. <laughs> so she says, okay, like, so you want to come back to Russia? That's fine. Like, she's, he's overreacting and she doesn't understand why he's overreacting. I don't understand why he's overreacting. She's right. Like, everything is moving way too fast. Varya is still thinking that he'll calm down and he'll come back to Russia, you know, and they can, they can keep on building their relationship up if they're like meant to be. But Jeffrey ain't with that. So the next scene, we see they make it to the airport. And Jeffrey has this, like, last shot to tell her, like, look, this is your last chance with me, boo. Once I get on that airplane, it's, it's over. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done. So she's still, she's still confused. Like, why is he acting like this? Um, aren't you coming back to Russia so we can build, like, on our relationship? Why are you giving me an ultimatum just because I said not yet to your proposal? But Jeffrey is hurt, okay? So he says, you know, whatever. And he goes into the airport. He's like, this is it. You're not going to see me again. So she goes into the airport and she tells him, I don't want you to leave. You know, like, I don't want it to leave like this. I, I want to see you again. I want to build on this. And he does like a whole 180. He says, you know, you've had your, last, you've had your chance, girl. It's over. You know, like, go ahead. And, you know, he was, she was hugging him. And he was saying, like, go ahead, like, I got to catch my flight. All right. Okay. You had your chance. You lost it. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> so that's it. He gets on the plane. He's like, look, I wanted love and I couldn't find it. So, you know, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever find it. <laughs> and Vari's probably still at the airport just confused. Like, what? What? What just happened? Girl, I don't know what happened either. 
So that was all for Vary and Jeffrey. Then we get to Ash and Avery. So last episode we saw that Ash was upset. Okay, he feels like Avery was didn't have his back during that whole seminar process, and she feels like he was saying some sexist, crazy stuff. Okay, <laughs> like we all thought. So he, they're back at that Airbnb, and he's like really upset to the point where he wants to walk out. So he tells her, look, if there's, if you love me, stop me, okay? And she's like, what is going on? So Ash is looking at her and tells her, look, if you love me, you're not going to let, let me walk out, okay? Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? And I was like, are we in like some type of movie? Like, <laughs> Ash was performing, okay? He really thought this was like a, a, a some type of the notebook or something. I was like, this is too much. This is too much. Avery thought the same thing. She she said, you came in here and you called me heartless. That was the first thing you said. Why would you think I want to talk to you after that? You're not even trying to be real or rational with me. And he says, okay, I did come out of here, you know, a little crazy. I called you heartless. We both need to work on how we speak to each other. And they agreed on that. And I was like, okay. So now it's awkward and they have to leave to meet up with his ex-wife, Sion, and their son that they have together, Tosh. So in the car, they're on the way to a hotel because where Sion lives is like a little far from where they are. So they're in the car and it is super awkward because he's, you know, they're both not, they're both not talking to each other, you know, after all that whole fight. Avery says, I want my own hotel room because like I need some time to myself. So Ash gets upset and he tells her like we're supposed to be we're supposed to fix things together okay we're not supposed to do things except we're supposed to come together and we're supposed to work out our problems together you know i don't understand why you want your own room but okay so so she's saying like i just need some time to myself that's all like this is, we had this big fight and i'm about to see your son and your ex-wife like i just need some time to myself so he drops her off at the hotel the next morning she's uh she gets a cab and she's on the way to Sion's house and he's gonna meet her there so she gets there and Ash is happy because he felt like from what happened yesterday she probably would just be done with it but he's happy that she came and that means that she wants to work things out and move forward with their relationship okay so she meets Sion and Taj and they're very nice and lovely and welcoming and they do like a little small talk between you know her and Taj and getting to know him and getting to know her and we see Ash, and Ash just looks like he is so nervous. <laughs> he is scared of what, you know, they're going to talk about and what they're going to say. So Sion invites her to like a wine bar so they can sit down and talk about Ash and, you know, all the stuff. Like, you know, the Ash that she, Sion knows and the Ash that Avery is trying to get to know. So they get there and he says, Ash overall is a good person, you know, from, from her viewpoint. And he, you know, he's a loving person. He wants to help people. He's just an overall good person. 95% of the time, but there's that 5% that she experienced that when he was stressed out or going through something, he would act like everything was okay. And that's the reason that they kind of had their split. So she says that they, they legally got divorced like last year. And Avery was like, what? Y'all got divorced, you said last year? And Sion tells her, yeah, we got divorced last year, but we had been separated for a couple of years. But, you know, we, we were on good terms. We waited. We pushed the actual, like, you know, legal divorce off until, like, last year, you know. And Avery was like, hmm, that's funny. You know, Ash never told me any of that. He, he acted like y'all had been done, like, been done. So, so she was like, interesting, interesting, okay. So Avery also asked her, you know, the, the situation with Taj because Ash made it seem like Sion is okay with bringing their son to America. And so Avery's like, what is the real, you know, how do you really feel about that? Sion tells her, look, I have a problem, like, I'm trying to get through that because I have a problem with that. Because that is my son and I don't think it was, it's helpful. I want him to be honest, daddy, but like, I don't think that's good for him and whatnot. And so Avery was like, hmm, that's the real answer. Because the way <laughs> the way Ash made it seem is that she was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's perfectly fine. But obviously it's not perfectly fine. So Avery now has the information that she wanted. And we're going to see what she does with it, okay? Then we get to Erica and Stephanie. So last episode, we were with, you know, uh, Erica's parents. And she came out to her parents. And 
And they were so lovely about it. They were so welcoming about it. They were like, if you're happy, we're happy. It's not a thing, boo. Like, we love you for who you are, not who we think you are and whatnot. So it was very, very nice. So the next morning, we see that now Stephanie wants to try and talk to her mom about, you know, yeah, and her coming out and whatnot. So she gets Erica and they FaceTime her mama. And <laughs> she gets on there and she says, you know, that she's talking to her mama. Her mama's asking her how she is, you know, with her condition and whatnot. And then Stephanie says, Mom, I have a confession. And we're like, okay, this is it. She says, I went shark cage diving. And Mom was like, oh my gosh, girl, why would you do that? Are you, you know, how was it? Everything was fine when you did it? And she was like, yeah, it was fine. Everything was nice. Everybody was nice about it. Erica was looking at her. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so... They end the phone call with the mama. Stephanie tells us she didn't feel like it was the right time. She didn't want to tell her mom over the screen. She wanted to do it in person. She, you know, she felt like her mama deserved that respect. But Erica was saying, you know, I really hope sometime soon in the future that you'll tell her. Because I, I don't want to be a secret. Okay. <laughs> so the next scene, they go to um, Matt's house, which is Erica's friend, you know, who she had a little history with. Um, he's throwing like a little game night at his house. And they get in there and the friends are looking at Stephanie like. We talk to the friends. We have like a one-on-one -on -one with the friends. And they say, look, we want Erica to be happy. You know, we want her to, you know, live her best life. But Stephanie was cutting up at the party last time. And, you know, Erica has to live her life and make her own mistakes. So I was like, okay, friends. So they get in there and Matt says, look, we're going to play a game and we're going to reveal some secrets. It's a, it's a game where you have to reveal secrets. And I was like, you're so shady, Matt. <laughs> Erica says the same thing. She's like, he did this on purpose, okay? He want, he's trying to start something, all right? He know this girl get jealous like that. So they play the game and she actually has a good time. And she, you know, she, she was noticing that it was like a judgment-free zone and they were all like in it together and whatnot. So it was nice. The next morning, Erica uh, and Stephanie are together and they, you know, Stephanie's about to leave. She's about to go back to America. And so they're talking and Erica opens up. She says, you know, I really hope that you find it. You find it. You find a comfortable space where you're able to come out to your mom about us. Cause I don't want to be a secret because I had a previous relationship, a 10 year relationship where I was kept a secret for 10 years. And my partner, she didn't want to come out. When I tell y'all, Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie flipped out, okay? Stephanie was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe you kept that a secret. That's something that I needed to know. But oh my gosh, and I can't believe that's the reason why you're pressuring me to come out now. It's because of that, that in the past, and you lied to me. You lied to me, okay? And I cannot believe that happened. And so, Erica and me, I'm like, girl, what? what is your problem, girl? That girl did not lie to you. She was trying to open up about something because y'all are still getting to know each other. She was trying to open up to you about what was going on and how she felt and, you know, based off of her past or some, like whatever. It was like a trauma situation or whatever. And the girl just, Stephanie just flipped out on her. I was like, this is, this is too much. Basically, what I think is just Stephanie, she needed a, she needed a reason to get out of the situation and it was the last day before she was going to leave and she had to end things. So she just picked something. <laughs> she just picked any old reason to, to break up with that girl. That's exactly what she does. So the <laughs> Stephanie walks outside and she comes back in and she's like, you know, I'm sorry for yelling at you. But, you know, it, it, I'm just so upset. And Erica's like, girl, you're doing the most. Stephanie says, you know what? We're breaking up because, you know, it's just... I'm done. I'm done. And Erica, <laughs> Erica says, okay, I'm, I, if you're done, I'm done. Cause this is, it's, it's been too much for me. So Erica packs up her stuff and she gets in her car and she rolls. And then we talk back to Stephanie. Stephanie says, I think Erica, you know, Erica's not a bad person. She's not a bad person, but it's just, we can't get past our differences. We just can't. And you know, <laughs> I was like, okay, Stephanie, it's, it's too much for me. So that's it for this episode, you guys. I hope you guys are doing okay still with everything going on. I love y'all, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.